I'm going to show you something that might look crazy. It's going to be to derive the quadratic formula. A lot of students don't bother really uh, learning about it, or maybe they've seen it, but they don't know where it came from. So this is not strictly needed, okay? So if you really don't care about this stuff, no problem. You can actually skip this video. But I do want to show you where it comes from, because it's a good example of how to do like the nastiest completing the square problem ever. If you can do this, you can do them all. So, so I started with this right here, meme <laughs> to baby parabolas, Drake. So we're actually going to try to generate this quadratic formula. I don't mean derive as in calculus, like do a derivation, um, a derivative I mean. I, I'm going to mean to derive as in to come up with. So we're going to use this idea from before with perfect squares. Remember that x plus a squared is going to be x squared plus 2ax plus, whoops, a squared. And we can use this idea here that x squared minus a, or sorry, x minus a, all that squared is going to be minus 2ax, but still plus a squared. So we're going to use this idea, right? We're going to complete the square, just like we did in another video. So to complete the square, I gave you some tricks here. We get x on one side, we have to get the x squared to have a coefficient of 1, then we're going to for the coefficient of x, we're going to divide it by 2. We're going to say that's a. We're going to add a squared, and we're going to do some magic and hope something good happens. So let's start off with our generic formula here. We're trying to find the solutions. Remember, the whole goal is to try to get that 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're trying to solve for the x values that make this happen. So I'm going to start off with that equation. Right? I'm going to say 0 equals, well, maybe I'll say it the other way around. I'll say ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. I'm going to start with that. And I'm going to get x's on one side. So I'm going to do that step. So I'm going to say, all right, that gives me ax squared plus bx equals minus c. Do you notice I just put the plus c over to the right? All right. I've got to have my x squared to have a coefficient of 1. So that's going to be the sort of Maybe I'll just show you like this. This was the first step here. I've gotten the x's on one side. There it is, right? I've done that. Now, if I want my x squared to have a coefficient of 1, how do I do that? Well, I've got to do something to it, right? I don't want this a there. So how do I get rid of the a? I divide by a, of course. So I'll do that then. So I'll say fine then, fine, fine, fine. I'll divide everything by a. So it's going to be... Um, I'll leave my x squared, maybe. So it's going to be x squared. Because Remember, I'm going to divide by a here, so that'll cancel it out there. And it's going to be, keep in mind, I'm just showing you what I'm ending up with. Right? I'm doing like this. But I'm going to divide both sides by a. So this divided by a disappears. This one divided by a gives you that. And c divided by a gives you that. Okay, so now I've got it. i am done that step. So although this looks really ugly, here I am. Right? I'm, I've actually I've done this. All right. So just say no. Although it looks really ugly, like, yep, okay. Well, to find your coefficient of, uh, so what we're supposed to do is for the coefficient of x, which is this one right here, we're supposed to divide by 2. So let me actually do that right now. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. So I'll say my b over a. Remember, that was this coefficient of x. I'm going to do it over here. b over a, but I'm going to divide it by 2. So that means it's going to become b over 2a. Now that was what we called A. That's going to get a little bit complicated, so don't worry because there's too many A's going on. But this is going to be the important thing here, okay? And I'm going to take that thing and I'm going to square it. That's going to give me B squared over, let's see, 2 squared, which is 4, and A squared, which is A squared. And I've got to add that to both sides. So this is the crazy part, right? This is the part here that seems a little bit crazy. I'm going to take this now. I'm going to add it to both sides. So keep in mind, this is the harder part here, okay? So keep in mind, it's not so... Like if you think this is really crazy, you're right. But we're going to just keep going here. So I've got x squared. I'm going to leave this b over a, because now I've got that here. So b over a times x. And I'm going to add... This is the key part here. I'm going to leave it like this here. I have my minus c over a now. I'm going to add this piece right here. That's my, my crazy part there. Okay, this part right here, this b squared over 4a squared. I'm supposed to add that to both sides. So I'll add it. So b squared over 4a squared. It's looking pretty gross, but don't forget i got to add it to both sides because it's an equation. I've got to do the right thing on both sides. Okay, so what do I do from here? Well, 
I can, uh, I'll just make another line here just to separate these ideas. So now I'm going to try to write this as a perfect square. Do you see this piece right here? This right here was the important part. Let me put it maybe in green or something just to do a different color here. This is going to be the key part here. It's going to be B over 2A. So just like we were doing with these right here, we're going to use this property of perfect squares that if I know what it is, I can rewrite it then as an X plus A. Well, X plus something. In this case right here, this is going to be my quote unquote, my, my A that we had here. I know it's complicated because there's an A and an A, but this is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to use this idea here to help me out. I'm going to say, great, this is going to be rewritten. And this left side, this entire left side here then, can be rewritten. This is actually a perfect square, although it looks really gross, but it's actually just X plus B over 2A. Now that whole thing is going to be squared because this thing right here is a perfect square. Notice because I can divide it by 2, right? And then I squared it, I got the b squared over 4a squared. So this is it. Now keep in mind though, I have to keep going on this side right here and say, well, that was that was a that was this perfect square part. But now I have to keep going and write this as a maybe common denominator here. And so this one right here, just so you know, this part right here then became this. That's because of this one right here, right? This one right here was the key to that one. So alright, I need to get a common denominator. I'm gonna get them both over 4a squared. So that way I can add these two. Now this second term is fine as it is. This one, however, to get from a to 4a squared, I gotta multiply it by four and by a. That means I gotta multiply the top by 4a. So four times a times minus c is minus 4ac. Now I'm gonna attempt to just rewrite this. Let's go to the other page maybe. So we'll go x plus b over 2a squared. I'll just rewrite it now. Let's go where we are here. There we go. So, I'll go uh, x plus b over 2a quantity squared. That equals, and I'm going to write my b squared one first. So b squared minus 4ac, all that over 4a squared. Okay, so b squared minus 4ac, all that over 4a squared. Whew, are you doing okay? <laughs> Although this is really gross, it's good practice. Now we can actually solve. Turns out we can get to x now. This is actually in a vertex form of some kind if I move this over. So let's get rid of the square. So we'll take the square root of both sides. All right, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll take the square root now of both sides. So what will that give me? That'll give me, let's see, it'll be x plus b over 2a equals, well, it'll be technically plus or minus the square root of God, it's gross, but there we go. So b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. Nope, 4a squared, I mean. There we go. Hmm. Before I go any further, maybe I can deal with this one. I think that'll be easier. So I'll go x plus b over 2a. I'll keep that one there. Now, the top part, I can't do anything about it, so I'll just leave it. It's just b squared minus 4ac. But the bottom part, however, I can take the square root of that. Square root of 4 is just 2. Square root of a squared is just a. So that's a little bit nicer. Now I'm going to get x by itself. So what do I do? I get x equals, let's see, I take this piece and move it to the right. It becomes minus b over 2a. All that plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. The good news is that means then I can rewrite it. Do you notice they both have the same common denominator? So finally, then I have minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a, and it turns out we're done. This is the quadratic equation. We've come up with this. Now this thing right here, it turns out it's solved. So if we have, if we're trying to solve something that goes like 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c, you could always complete the square with all those numbers and then solve for x, or you can just say, start from here and go to here. This turns out this is called the quadratic formula, the quadratic equation, sometimes people call it. it. Depends on what you want to call it, but this is it. This is why I had the, you know, bad joke here, the quadratic formula. We just derived it. We've came up with it from first principles. Now, if you thought this was really gross, you're right, it was. And how's this? Let's never do that again. Let's just use it now. Now we know where it came from. It didn't come from nowhere. So maybe you feel like this. <laughs>
laughed. That made me laugh. At least it made me laugh. But there we go. We've actually derived the quadratic formula from a generic one. We completed the square and then solved for x. Ta-da!